Today we are going to talk about the organization of life. First of all, we'll have a brief look on what is life. Anything is considered living if it have few properties. One, it acquires energy from the environment and utilize that energy for uh, performing its various functions. Second property is that it reproduce itself for continuation of its race. For example, Lions eats other animals to acquire energy and uh, deers um, eats uh, the leaves of the other plants or the grasses and uh, convert them into the chemical energy uh, for their performing their functions. There is a third property of life uh, which is almost equally important that is anything is living if it mutate or change itself in response to the change in environment. Sometimes these changes or uh, mutations, are, they are spontaneous. If they are uh, useful for the organism, they continue in the race. If they are uh, uh, sometimes uh, lethal or uh, they are not useful, they are uh, discarded or uh, sometimes they may become very lethal for the organism and the organism, um, it dies. Now we look at the next thing. What is biology? Biology is a uh, study of life, bios life, logos, study or reasoning. So biology means the study of life or the reasoning about life, about the living part of the world. Why this is important and why this is useful? Because uh, the living part of the world is uh, related to the human beings and the science is basically for the benefit of human being and for the sustainability of the systems upon the environment particularly uh, for uh, the whole of the biosphere. Now we look at how life is organized. What are various levels of organization in life? We look at a flowchart. As you can see in this flowchart, there are different levels of organization in life. We just have a brief look on these uh, levels and then we will go in the detail one by one. Anything or any matter or mass mainly consists of Atoms. Atom is a term, not to cut. It is uh, assumed that atom is the smallest particle of the elements uh, which are not dividable further. Um, they have all the properties of that particular element. Atoms make molecules. Atoms join together. They rarely live in the environment in isolation, but they live in, uh, in uh, combinations. They join together by a particular type of bonding uh, to make molecules. Molecules make large molecules or the macromolecules. Then these molecules make cells. Cells make tissues, that is groups of cells which work together to make uh, larger uh, forms called organs. Organs make the organ systems. Organ systems make organisms and organisms make populations. Populations makes communities. Communities makes the ecosystems and all of the ecosystems of the world makes biosphere. We look at all these levels now one by one. Atoms. This word comes from Greeks, atom, not to cut. This is the smallest part of an element that is not uh, dividable further. Atoms are, uh, but they retain the properties of that particular element. In nature, there are about 92 elements. Among these 92 elements, there are only 16 that makes the living things. Among these 16, there are about few elements which makes about 99% of the living beings. These are um, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium and phosphorus. There are many others including calcium, potassium, iron, zinc, which makes another 1%. We call all of these elements the bioelements. What is atom itself? As you can see in the diagram, an atom consists of an orbital or maybe more than one orbitals and a nucleus, a central part. In the nucleus or in the central part, there are two types of subatomic particles called protons, which are positively charged, the other called neutrons which don't have a charge. And there's a third type of subatomic particles called electrons, 
which keep moving around in orbitals surrounding that uh, uh, nucleus uh, all the time. So it means that an atom have three types of uh, subatomic particles, electrons negatively charged and always moving, protons positively charged stay inside the nucleus and the neutrons which also stay inside the nucleus. Atoms do not live in isolation. Atoms join together to make molecules. Now there are two types of bondings by which atoms join together. One is called ionic bonding and other is called covalent bonding. In ionic bonding, one atom gives away its electrons to the second atom and they stay together. The other type is called a covalent bonding in which both atoms share their electrons, few of their electrons and they stay together. Covalent bonding is more strong type of bonding in comparison to the ionic bonds. Molecules are of uh, two types. One are called micromolecules and others are called macromolecules. Micromolecules are uh, those molecules which have a low molecular weight uh, and the macromolecules as the name says macro big, they are the molecules which are large uh, which have a higher molecular weight. Um, for example, uh, micromolecules include uh, the glucose molecule, the water molecule and the macromolecules. They include the proteins, um, carbohydrates and the lipids. There are different types of macromolecules which are present inside an organism. Carbohydrates, uh, lipids, proteins may make different types of structures. They may perform different types of functions. Uh, for example, if we take proteins, uh, we can call proteins structural proteins or we can call them functional proteins. Structural proteins, if they are making a structure, for example, they are making a um, cell, a part of cell, they are called functional. If they are an enzyme and uh, they have to help a reaction inside the cell. Now we look at uh, the structures of various micromolecules and macromolecules. Here you can see in the diagram, there are two micromolecules. One is called the water molecule and the other is the glucose molecule. Both are models which are showing you that how these molecules look like and how they bond together. In the next diagram, you can see various macromolecules. Here you can see a hemoglobin molecule. Hemoglobin is a very important protein that is present inside the blood cells and it carries oxygen and it transports oxygen in all of the organism, organism's body through blood. Blood is a liquid tissue. As you can see, there is a red blood cell and we are showing hemoglobin molecule outside the blood cells which have different protein chains and have few iron molecules as well. Here is the next, DNA. DNA is the genetic material of the organisms. Here you can see a molecule of DNA which have a double helix. Both helices, there are two chains which are running in a helix form parallel to each other. And uh, this is the genetic material. This is, we can say, the blueprint of life which makes all the living organisms. Here is the third important form, the lipids or the fats. Lipids or fats, these um, are uh, present in the form of long carbon chains which have hydrogen molecules attached on the various sides. Lipids may be uh, of two types called saturated lipids present in animal cells and the unsaturated lipids present in the plant cells. Saturated lipids, as you can see in their structure, they are straight and um, they are solid at room temperature. But the unsaturated lipids, which are present in plants, um, have double bonds in their structure and with the result, they have nicks or bendings in their structure. Due to these bendings, they remain liquid at the room temperature. Now we go to the next part, that is the organelles. Molecules, micromolecules and macromolecules uh, join together to make larger structures. These structures are called organelles. Organelles are subcellular structures. That is, these are the structures which makes cells. Organelles are of different kinds. 
according to the type of cell there are different types of organelles um, there are there are few organelles which all cells do have like mitochondria uh, which is called powerhouse of the cell and it uh, produces energy um, like nucleus which have uh, the genetic material of the cell and um, it um, it it is responsible for the heredity and genetic information transfer um, like uh, ribosomes which makes proteins which are the sites where protein synthesis takes place so there are different kinds of organelles and these organelles combine to make a cell cell the basic unit of life here you can see in the diagram on the right side there is a diagram of uh, the powerhouse of the cell mitochondria in the left you can see an electron microscope a transmission electron microscope image of the same mitochondrion which is drawn on the right side that is the real life image of mitochondria taken through a transmission electron microscope as you can see it have many membranes this organelle actually produces all the energy required by the cell in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate cells organelles join together to make cells cells are the basic units of life cells are the smallest living thing if we can say uh, all the living organisms they consist of cells cells are of various kinds there are different types um, and they consist of different types of organelles there are uh, certain organisms which consist of only one cell we call them unicellular organisms for example various protozoans um, like uh, a paramecium like an amoeba there are further there are other organisms which consist of many cells there are more organisms which consist of billions and trillions of cells so cell is the basic unit of life here you can see in the diagram a unicellular organism a bacteria this uh, diagram shows you the inner part of bacteria and the outer part of bacteria in the inner part you can observe the nucleoid region actually the prokaryotes say prokaryotes pro means old Karyo means nucleus. They have an old type of nucleus, which is actually not technically called a nucleus because this is not enclosed by the membrane. It has its genetic material in the form of a chromosome. You can see the cytoplasm of that cell and you can see the membranes and walls which are covering the bacterial cell. Now in the next diagram, you can see the plant cell. The plant cell is covered by a thick wall, then cell membrane, then comes if it's different organelles as you can observe in the diagram you can see a vacuole a large vacuole plant cells have a very large vacuole when they are mature you can see a nucleus which is slightly on a side due to presence of a large vacuole you can see different uh, mitochondria you can see the golgi apparatus and lot many other organelles inside the cell in this diagram you can see an animal cell animal cell is different from plant cell in the sense it don't have a wall it don't have a cell wall it is covered by only a cell membrane in its inside you can observe almost the same organelles like the nucleus mitochondria the endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies ribosomes and lot many other organelles there is still another type of cells called stem cells you have seen the plant cells animal cells bacterial cells all of these cells are differentiated differentiated means that they are uh, they are developed they are adopted to perform a specific function in the adult uh, human being in the adult animals and more precisely in their embryos there are few types of cells which are almost undifferentiated we call these cells stem cells these cells are important for us because they are undifferentiated. Um, why they are undifferentiated? Because uh, almost all of their genes are switched off. These genes are not doing anything. Um, it means that we can convert these cells into any type of cells. 
Now, this is very important for us because uh, if a person, for example, these days there are a lot many diseases due to which people become, uh, become disabled, like uh, if there is a spinal injury, um, if there is um, a person of, uh, a patient of hepatitis, their liver is damaged. And the result is this, that their organ is not functioning. Now, we can develop these stem cells into different types of tissues and organs. And we can replace the damaged tissue, of, tissue or organ of the uh, patient, and the patient can um, run the healthy life. So, these cells are very important for us. These are present in various uh, uh, adult uh, uh, organisms, and mostly these are present in embryos. Uh, but using the embryonic stem cells is, um, is uh, considered uh, by most of the, uh, the religions unethical, and um, there is a debate on the stem cell use. But still, there are various sources of stem cells which are, um, which are not debatable and uh, which are still in use in the medical sciences. So, there are different types of cells present inside the and organisms. Um, cells may be um, epithelial cells, which makes the skin of the organisms. Cell may be the nervous cells, which make different types of nerve cells, the neurons, which transmit the messages between all of the organisms. Cells may be of stomach, which, um, which contract and relax for the movements of stomach. Cells may be of muscles, which are long, long fibers, and um, which, makes, uh, which uh, makes our body move and change its directions, so on. The cells makes tissues. Tissues, what are tissues now? Tissues are the groups of similar cells, which perform a similar function. There are different types of tissues present inside the organism's bodies. Uh, there are few organisms which consist of only two layers of tissues called ectoderm and um, endoderm. There are few organisms which have more layers and there are few organisms as complex as the human beings, which have a lot many types of tissues uh, which perform their different functions. Now we look at these diagrams uh, which show you um, different types of tissues and their functions. Let's have a look on the diagrams. Here, in the first diagram, you can observe the epithelial cells, simple columnar epithelium. These cells are um, elongated, quite long, and these are present in the intestine. These cells can absorb different types of nutrients. These cells are specialized in their functions and uh, their function is to absorb nutrients. They are designed in a way, in a fashion, that they can absorb nutrients from its environment. As you know, that when food is digested, it is passing through the intestine. And within the intestine, there are these cells which have property of absorbing these different types of foods. When the digested food pass through these cells, pass from near of these cells, then these cells absorb the digested part. In the second diagram, you can see a slightly different types of cells. These cells are present in our trachea, below our throat, in our respiratory tract. As you can see in their structure, these cells have cilia on their surface. Cilia, cilia are basically small hair-like projections of the cell membrane. These cells produce mucus as well. And as you know, that when we take in the air, this air passes through the trachea, passes through the airways. And there are a lot many dirt particles and molecules present in that air. These particles are trapped by the movement of these cilia, and they are trapped inside these, uh, the mucus present on the surface of these cells. And hence, the air which goes inside our lungs is clean, clear. Here you can see in the next diagram, another type of cells, which are called stratified cells, which are present in our mouth, in our esophagus, in our digestive tracts. And these cells perform different types of functions. These have to allow the food pass through. And below these cells, we have muscle cells, which contract and relax on intervals to move our food down our esophagus, down our food canal in a regular fashion. If this uh, movement is changed, if this movement is in the other direction, we experience vomiting. Vomiting is the anti-normal direction of the 
movement of the food. So there are different types of tissues. Um, still we can say, talk about for example the nervous tissue. The nervous tissue or the nerve uh, uh, or the tissue in the spinal cord and the brain, they have various different properties. They have nerve cells in them and uh, they are supported by different other cells. Uh, these cells collectively perform the transmission of information from the brain to the body and from the body back to the brain. So cells are specialized and they, when they make tissues, that is groups of cell, similar cells which perform a specific function, then uh, they make the tissue specific as well. That is one tissue will perform one function, it will consist of similar type of cells.